Okay, so for the remainder of this section, we are going to be working inside this Excel practice file. So if you haven't already downloaded the practice file from the resources, I strongly suggest doing that now so you can follow along and practice as we go. Once you have the file open, you will see many different sheets at the bottom of this workbook. But for this video, we will be working inside the Employee Data tab. So make sure that you have this sheet selected. Okay, so before we actually begin analyzing our data, it's important to know how to prepare your data for analysis. Currently on this sheet, we have a data set. And a data set is a range of contiguous cells containing data to analyze. And what I mean by contiguous is that there are no blank rows within our data set. So there might come a time where you export data from a different software application and import it into Excel to analyze it. And your data might look something like this. This data set provides information about each employee within an organization. And just for the record, all of this is completely randomized. But if we look in the first row of our data set, we see that we have column headings. So in column A, we have employee ID number, column B, first name, last name, email, and so on. These column names are called headers. And having headers for your data is very important because once we start sorting, converting data into tables, inserting pivot tables, and doing other calculations, Excel will identify these columns by the header. And not only do headers help Excel, but it also helps for your organization as well. So you know that in column A, it's the employee ID number. And in column I, we're looking at the zip code. I wanted to show you an example of a correctly formatted data set because having the correct format, the analysis will go a lot smoother. So if we scroll down through this data set, it's pretty short. We only have 49 rows of data. Well, actually 48 minus the header row. But if you notice, there are no blank rows separating the data. Really quickly, let me show you the potential problems when you do have blank rows within your data. So if I insert a blank row randomly inside our data set, and if I click a random cell within the top half of this list, and if I use the keyboard shortcut to select all, which is Control A or Command A if you're on Mac, it only selects the top half of this data set because now our data set is not contiguous. So Excel thinks there's two different lists. And let me show you the potential problems that can arise when our data set is not contiguous. For example, if I wanted to sort this list by the employee's first name, I would click inside our first name column, go to the data tab, and select the A through Z sort. So Excel sorted by the first name, but only for the top half of our data set, because from row two, to row 18, our first name is alphabetically sorted. But once it gets to this blank row, it stops and it doesn't sort the rest of the column. And that's why I wanted to take the time to show you that having a correct formatted data set is important once we start analyzing our data.